Hi everyone and welcome to yet another video about the JIT and today we're going to be talking about array bound checks. So let's jump right in and let's see what it's all about. Okay, so whatever we have a method, for example, which takes an array and let's just say that we want to assign something to the index of the array. What you're going to see is that the JIT compiler will emit a check here. So it will go to this address, which is uh, the array length and it will check it will do a comparison with zero. So a comparison assembly is kind of like a subtraction. So we're gonna subtract zero from this, the length of the array here, and we're gonna check if the result is less or equal to zero. And if it is, then we're gonna jump to L16, and L16 is a throw of exception. So we're gonna throw an exception when we do that. And this is uh, what we call a bounce check. So the bounce check is a special check which checks if the array is within the bounds. So this is it. And if we're in the bounds, then what you're gonna see is that we're gonna assign one to the address of the array at the index zero, which starts here. So if, if we're gonna do like a one equals one, for example, just to show you, then we're gonna do two checks. So first we're gonna check if we're not less or equal than zero. Then we're gonna do another check, which means that it checks if we were in the bounds still of this array and we're gonna assign to the indexes. And what you're gonna see is very interesting optimization happened now where we're gonna take the length from this address and we're gonna assign this to a register. And from now on, we're gonna just check against that register which is an optimization technique because registers are usually the fastest thing that you can do and you can use. So whatever you using something like a register, it's going to be faster than my memory because the latency and access times are different, even if the memory is cached. So the register is probably the fastest thing that you can have. So that's why the compiler copied it to a register because it we're expecting more checks like that, right? Okay, so um, let's do stuff like that. And as you can see, again, we have a bunch of checks. That's not very exciting because normally uh, you don't do things like that, but let me show you how to solve this problem. So say, say for example, that we don't want to have this many checks because we know that this array has like K elements, like 10 elements, and we're just trying to set the first three, for example. So let's, create another method called n. Let's do the same thing. But now the optimization will be, uh, let's do it from like, let's reverse the order in which we were doing these assignments, right? Okay. So in the second version, as you can probably tell, what, what we're doing here really is we're doing a single bounce check against the index two. And that gets again assigned to a register and we're doing a check. If uh, the check is successful, then we're gonna jump and we're gonna crash. But if, if we're in the bounds, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just assign indexes and that's good. So why this happened? Well, the reason is really simple because in this, the, in this example here, what we have to do is we have to check against every index because we're increasing in the index uh, indexes, right? From We're going from zero to two, which means that we have to check against every index. Since we already checked against two, there's no need to check against one because we know that we're never gonna crash because what we have here is a smaller index than two. So for example, if I would add another index, like for example, five, then we have to emit another check. So now we have two checks, but if, if we're gonna add like three here, then we don't have to emit any checks because again, we already saw a higher index. So if we saw the higher index, then we don't have to do any checks. Of course, this could be further optimized, but currently it's not, where the compiler could, could just do, well, we have four here, so let's not even check against two. But in this case, it's from like top to bottom. So as you can see, we're gonna check against two as well. And then we're gonna check against four and not against three. So this is a pretty cool optimization technique that you can do. So whatever you have something that's not really assigned in a loop, but assigns to an array, to a portion of the array, then you can use the reversed indexing in order to be able to not emit this many checks. 
So that's interesting. Let's move to yet another example, which is interesting. And um, it's probably a bug of sorts. So whatever we have, a slightly more complicated example, we're gonna have the array again, but we're gonna have a variable which we're gonna check against. So for example, if x equals one, then a zero will be one. And let's go to the method. Let me delete these methods here. And as you can see now, what I have is I have a check again. So this is our bounce check here, these two instructions and uh, nothing really special happens here but let's continue let's do else if x equals for example two then a zero will be one again why not so what i have here is um, a code got just like sort of split into two blocks so that's the first if and that's the second if and as you can see we're doing bounce check against this register here and this register here because this is uh, checked against the x variable so now as you can see we didn't copy stuff to the register because uh, we're just comparing from my memory so we're loading our like zero and we're trying to compare against the array length which is addressed uh, to the main memory so how can we do something about it? because there's not really a thing that we can currently do about uh, being able to do these checks because even if we have index one here and index zero here you're gonna see that we're still gonna emit bounce checks because the compiler at least to my knowledge currently cannot optimize stuff within the if statements and if expressions of course, if we would uh, go and, for example, say, well, a one equals one and a zero equals one, then in this branch, um, we're gonna do a single bounce check, but um, the bounce checking optimization cannot flow between the branches. So that's a thing to consider, especially in, in branches if you have if and else if, because if we're gonna do a two if statements it's still not going to do much for us but in theory it could do a better job but currently the current implementation does not support this okay but still the problem here is that uh, what we're doing is we're doing a comparison against the main memory so each time we have to load the length from main memory and do the check and there is a really a optimization trick that we can do and it's it, it should be probably classified as a bug of sorts because as you, you're gonna see if I do the following so let's have a local called L and let's do a length let's assign the length to our like unnecessary unused variable L and what you're gonna see is that in this statement here we're gonna copy the length to the register and that's all good but now what happens is uh, something really interesting because we're not going to compare against memory we're just going to use this register we're checking if this is within the bounds here and we're checking if this is within these bounds here so that local although unnecessary got used in a way because that uh, that register that um, is using this local got used to be able to optimize these bounce checks which is again i think it's a bug of the compiler currently i'm not sure but it looks like one so hopefully that's gonna get patched and it's gonna get patched in a way where uh, we're always going to for example use the register if that makes sense all right let's move to yet another example which is interesting so i've told you about bounce checks, whatever we have a like a non loop example, wherever we have a bunch of like assignments, right? But what happens if we have the same array, but we're going to do stuff in a loop. And this was already in a way covered before, because if we're going to do a simple loop where we're just going to use the length variable, what's going to happen is we're just going to emit uh, and let me do the assignment 
we're not going to do any bounce checks. And um, the reason is that we're checking against the length, but if we would, for example, do like 10, then we would do a technique called loop cloning. And I've already covered this in the previous video. So I'm going to leave a link in the description about, so you can go and see what uh, loop cloning really is. So what's going to happen here is uh, very quickly, we're going to have two loops, a slow loop and a fast loop. And if the array is within the bounds of this number here, then we're going to use the first version, which doesn't have any bounce checks. But if it's not, if it's, for example, zero, null, less than 10, because uh, if the array length is less than 10, then we're going to crash. And if we're going to crash, we're going to go to the slow version, which will do bounce checks and every single optimization will be off for that loop. So what's cool about this example, if you're using our lane, array length, then you don't have to do much because it all just works for you. What if now you would like to use uh, like assigned a half of the array, for example, or just 10 elements or any bunch of elements. So if we would do array length divided by two, then what's going to happen is uh, the division will be done a single time. And now it's going to get assigned to a register. But now what we're going to see is that we have a loop here. So this is our increment. This is our comparison. Uh, if we're less than this number here, we're going to jump. So we're going to jump to 1B and 1B is here. So as you can see, we're already doing a bounce check here. So we're doing a comp an extra comparison to see if we were in within the bounds of uh, the array. And we're not even checking if we're within the bounds of this expression. We're checking if we're in the bounds of the length, which is interesting. And as you can see, the length got copied into an ECX register. So this comparison really is not uh, very much needed because this will never change. So, I mean, yeah, that's an unnecessary bounce check here. And now loop cloning might be the solution to that problem, because if if we would go and take this and assign it to a local and then use that local for the condition check. Now we're going to clone the loop and we're going to have a slow version and a fast version. And the fast version will get used if this array is within the bounds of this L here. And if it, and it is, and uh, there's going to be additional checks. And I believe one of the checks will check if the array isn't null and if the length is zero or less than zero. Because if it is, then we're going to go to the slow version, which will in crash. But if it's going to crash, then all of the optimizations will be turned off. Most of the time, as you can expect, we're going to land within the fast loop. And the fast loop is here. And the fast loop jumps to uh, L30 and L30 is here. So we're not emitting any bounce checks now which is very good because this is what we wanted. And this is yet another optimization technique. Normally, if you have a predictable loop without any sort of extra things in that loop, you don't want to generate um, the loop clone version because it has a bunch of additional checks on the entry of the method. And you jump to a slow version or a fast version, you get more code and it's just a tiny bit slower. But if you have a problem like that, so you, you're not going to use all of the indexes of the array here, then it would be wise to do loop cloning because otherwise you're going to emit a bounce check every single time. So that may be a worthwhile optimization technique if you care about reducing the checks in each iteration of the loop here. So if you like the video, then leave a like, possibly subscribe. Uh, because that's all for, for this uh, video today and hope to see you, um, you know, next time and uh, thank you and bye.